get one little piece of invoice information wrong or neglect to verify one piece of invoice information and disaster could ensue. For starters, you could pay too much or worse, not pay a critical supplier who cuts your company off. And if that's not bad enough, word of one of these mistakes is likely to reach top management who will not be happy with you. An error on an invoice could be a real catastrophe for your career. We're going to go through the 14 parts of an invoice and not only explain what they are, but how each piece is used. Make sure you stick around until the end when we share two pieces of invoice in or information that when used incorrectly can create some of the headaches we've been discussing and more. The first part, you should have the word the word invoice across the top of the document in large letters. Now you might be looking like what in God's name would they be using that for? But this is what it's used for. When the invoice ends up in the wrong place, the person who's looking at it might not recognize what an invoice looks like. So with the word invoice on top of it, they'll know it's an invoice and a and it should go to accounts payable for processing. So that's it, that's kind of a no brainer. The second piece, the name and address of the company. This is the address where the invoice is being mailed, if you're still mailing it uh, by paper, or it could be the uh, email address where you're, you're sending it, if you're sending it in that way. It should not be the general address of the company, because think about it, when the mail arrives at the company, the person who's sorting the mail has to know where to send this, this particular piece of mail. So they, you want to tell them exactly where it should go, so if you can get paid on time and pay quickly. Conversely, if you're receiving invoices that do not have the correct exact uh, address on it, you might want to inform the supplier that, hey, you should change our all right. Okay. Um, next, it should have the name and address of the supplier on it, which, by the way, may not be where you're sending the payment. And this is simply so the person who's processing the invoice can know who, who it's from, and also they can make sure supplier that they're doing business with, and then they'll it will get their processing started correctly. An invoice number, and maybe I should say a unique invoice number. This is used by the uh, customer to weed out duplicate invoices. Just for starters. So you want to have that invoice number right on the uh, uh, on the document. And you'd be surprised how many invoices come in without an invoice number. It's just going to delay your processing. Invoice date. Uh, this is used to calculate when the payment is due. Now, many accounts payable departments will start the clock ticking, if you will, for when they're going to make the payment based on when the invoice is received. But as more and more invoices are being received electronically, uh, that should match the invoice date on the document. It will also give the people who are processing the invoice um, an idea of when you expect payment. And in a few cases, you'll get lucky and they'll use that to start the clock. But most of them are going to put their own date down. So don't 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 play games with that. Um, next, we have what we call, I call anyway, and a lot of other people do, most other people, line item details. And this is the items that be, are being billed and all the, the details. So you might have 14 green widgets at a dollar 14 each for a total of whatever that works out to be line by line um, this is really important because if uh, it's going to be verified and when the uh, person is checking the invoice and there's a mistake or there's a discrepancy they can they can circle it or make note of it and then when they contact the supplier uh, because there's a discrepancy on the invoice they can tell them exactly where it is and it will lead to getting the discrepancy resolved quicker and getting the supplier paid in a more timely manner so it's in everybody's best interest to have that um, the next item and this gets left off more often than it should is if there's a purchase order the purchase order number should be reflected on the invoice. This allows the invoice processor, when they get it, to know exactly who to go to to uh, make sure that the invoice should be paid. Not It's not used for accuracy. Um, they'll just, well it is, but I'll, and I'll get to that, um, but they, this will tell them who to send it to. And in fact, many companies today, many best practice companies today, if they receive an invoice that does not have a purchase order number on it, um, or the name of the person who placed the order, they will We'll send it back to the uh, supplier saying you've got to supply this information. Okay, purchase order number, very important. And your cu the customers also use that when they're verifying the invoice and also to make sure that they haven't paid twice. Okay, 
Um, I've already alluded to the next piece of information, the name of the person who placed the order. Uh, this is important again, so it helps the processor know who to send the item to if for approval to pay. And uh, most importantly, if there is any are any questions about it, they know who to who to go to. So it just smooths it makes the processing of the invoice a little smoother, which helps the supplier in that then they'll more they'll get paid fast, hopefully. Okay, next item, sales tax if applicable. It's really important that this be shown on the invoice so that the the customer if they're audited for sales tax if they are subject to a sales tax audit they can prove that they paid uh, the, the appropriate sales tax that was due it's important that it be broken out and shown on the invoice uh, putting sales tax included um, is really not sufficient next item other charges, um, if there are any like freight, customization, etc. So again, when they're verifying the invoice and the accuracy of the invoice, they can go go down and they can identify each uh, piece. So then, for example, if you included insurance and they weren't supposed to pay the insurance you were, um, they can come back and they can pinpoint exactly where the issue is, and that way you can resolve the discrepancy uh, faster, one way or the other. However, it's going to work out. Next item, the total amount due and if it's an international transaction the currency and so this this can be important it's especially important uh, we run into trouble um, US companies with Canada if you don't specify US dollars Canadian dollars but whatever it is you want to put the total amount that you're expecting and the the currency like I say if currency is important or, an, or likely to be an issue uh, next item you want to include the address where the payment should be pay sent if the payment is being made by check. Now, hopefully, um, you've provided this information ahead of time and the, um, the customer is going to look up on the, in their master vendor file and get it there. But, you know, just in case they can't find it, you want to include it there. And remember, that address where you want the, the payment sent, it might not be the same as the address at the top with, with your name because you might have your headquarters address there, but you might want the money to go to a bank lockbox. This, of course, assumes that you're paying with a paper check. Of course, you know, as we more and more companies now move to electronic payments, um, th this piece of information on the invoice is less important. And so then you might include something like, uh, you know, please make payment to bank account information previously um, shared with the, the customer. I know um, in other countries, many times they put the bank account information on the invoice itself, but in the United States, that is not a common practice, or at least it's not a common practice yet. And just as, as an aside, if you're processing invoices in the United States and there is a bank account uh, listed or and it's it, it's changed, don't necessarily accept it right off there. You need to call up and verify just like you would call up and verify any other change of payment activity. There have been some fraud in this area. Okay. Um, we talked about including the address if the, the payment is being made by check. You might also want to include payment terms on here. Um, so, you know, the invoice date is October 1st. Uh, payment terms are next 30. And then this way they can easily calculate that the payment terms are the payment is due on October 31st. First. If you're processing the invoice, don't necessarily take those payment terms for, as gospel because, you know, they, they may not be right. They may not be what was agreed to. So you're going to want to verify that before, uh, with your own records, before you go ahead and pay according to that. Now, the next item is rarely listed. Um, and I know people don't list it because they don't want a lot of calls and complaints, but it's really not a good idea. And this is what you want to include is contact information on the invoice. Um, a name, an email address, a phone number, etc., where they can call if there is a question. Um, as, as I said, this is often not included, and then the person has a question with the invoice and they don't know how to go, who to go to, so they put it to the side of, of their desk, um, and they'll, you know, they'll come back to it later, and then, you know, later there's days and days and days, and it just delays payment. So include uh, a, con a name and contact information if there is a question about the invoice. Don't think, oh, 
low. Well, if they have nobody to call, they're just going to go ahead and pay the whole thing because in 99 and three quarters percent of the time, they're not going to, okay? It's probably obvious to you by this point that invoices are a lot more complicated than they might appear at first glance. Get any detail wrong and you could end up paying for something twice, paying the wrong vendor or even worse, paying a criminal. And getting your funds back is a lot harder than you may think and sometimes impossible. That's why we put together a comprehensive talk explaining best practices, works practices, internal controls, and more, all related to invoices. You can watch it right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description. Good luck.